Nissan's electric vehicles run on a special electricity. Not the electricity that turns on light bulbs or runs through your outlets. I'm talking that spine-tingling goosebump feeling that electrifies your body and soul. It could be the simple win of leaving on time for your morning commute or scoring the largest deal of your career. Nissan is continuously evolving and changing the game through electric vehicle engineering. Because the electricity of their cars not only moves engines, it also moves the emotions of those who drive them. To learn more about Nissan's electric vehicle lineup, visit www.nissanusa.com. Hey everyone, Andy Cohen here. Listen, I know a thing or two about New Year's, like how you're probably just about to bail on your resolutions. And I get it. My resolution to sleep better was keeping me up at night, but not anymore. Because with a Walmart Plus membership, you can save your resolutions by saving time and money. With free shipping, gas savings, video streaming, plus so much more. So don't give up. Whatever your resolution, save it with a Walmart Plus membership. Join now to get $50 Walmart cash. Terms apply. Visit walmartplus.com for more information. Episode 340 is episode 190, how to prepare for a no-spend challenge and the secret to sticking to it. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. And it is the end of September, and we know that October is a very popular no-spend month for many of you. So we wanted to replay this episode, which was very popular two years ago. If you are interested in doing no-spend October or just a 30-day no-spend challenge, if you've already bought all your spooky season stuff, but you know you're going to spend money on Halloween. Either way, we want to support you in that with this episode. Yes, it's such a good one. I love I love challenges. I love gamifying things. Mm, yes. But first, this episode is brought to you by Being Ready. It's not just for the overachievers and first responders. We know there's plenty of you out there who are ready, down to party up for a hang. Frankly, ready for anything. We also know you're ready for our newsletter. That's right. We're in your inbox three times a week with a carefully curated list of freebies, savings tips, and money hacks that you don't want to miss. So go get yours at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash friend letter. We're ready. You're ready. Let's be ready together. Woo! (laughs) We love the friend letter. It's so good. We love writing it. We love reading each other's friend letters. We love getting your actual emails back to us about the friend letter. The whole thing's just a real community vibe. So if you love no spend challenges, we have done a lot of episodes over the years on these. This is just one of them. Um, We also have episode 286, Should You Try a No Spend Challenge?, And then episode 127, How a No-Spend Challenge Can Help Your Finances. We really believe that taking a pause for just one month on discretionary spending can very much help you identify your spending triggers and then figure out what you truly value and what you want to work on not spending on long term. So we don't think that no-spend challenges are fad diets. We think they're just an opportunity to pause for a short amount of time and recalibrate. So without further ado, let's get into this helpful episode on how to prepare for a no-spend challenge. Let's do it. All right, moving on to our articles on no-spend challenges. Uh, The first is from Forbes.com, and it is titled, Is a No-Spend Month the Right Way to Save Money? What do you think, Jill? (laughs) I think that's clickbait, because we (laughs) all know the answer to this one. Well, it is up for a little debate. I think I've I've talked about no-spend challenges long enough to hear both, I mean, I people that are like vehemently against them because if you do them wrong, they are like the detox fad diets of mm-hmm. the personal finance world. But if you do them right, a detox can be really helpful for you. Right. So it just depends right. on your mentality around it. Well, again, 
they yes, they do mention that in this article, but most of the article is written in support of a no spend challenge and highlights how to go about one, what it can highlight for you, what you should be considering. So even from the author's perspective, I think they are advocating for this. So clickbait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they they walk through the essentials of planning for a no spend month. And so these are all super important uh, in getting started. So the first one is define your essentials for the no spend month. So there is no one correct answer for what essentials are for you or to even how to do a no spend month. That's something that I think is really important to know that you should never just take somebody else's rubric for how to do something and try to replicate it. You should Mm -hmm. figure out what you're struggling with, what you want to do, and then craft a challenge uh, around those that gets you the growth that you want to see. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worth thinking through and exploring everything that Forbes lays out here in how to do a no spend, because that is a really important tip for how you stick to a no spend month is this preparation time and really understanding what it is, how you engage with it so that you don't end up in that camp of why the heck do we do these? They're awful. Well, (laughs) if you do them right, they're great. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to their definition here of what a no spend challenge is at least for just a month. We know that you could do a no spend challenge day, week, month, which is what we're focusing on here, even year. So you choose, but we're we're talking about a month for the purpose of this episode. And so it's taking one month off from your usual spending habits to try to build up a certain amount of cash savings in the bank. Again, you decide what that amount is. What is it that you want to cut out? What is it that you do want to be able to spend on? And how much are you hoping to save by the time that this month is over? So the the second thing that they mention here that it can help with is to just refocus your budget. It allows you to take a fresh look at your spending. And they ask some really relevant questions here that I appreciate in preparing for and doing this no spend challenge. Of course, it's going to require us to look at and track our spending, to look at what have we been spending on, what do we want to be spending on, and ask ourselves, have our habits gotten out of line with what we say our goals are or even our values? I know you've heard us all talk about values-based spending. So as you look at your recent spending, are they are they in line or out of line? They even mention how some people with the pandemic have done really well with not spending as much because there's no commute, maybe you're eating lunch at home more, kind of getting into different habits. But then for some of us, it has given excuse and reason to spend in ways that maybe don't align with our goals and values. So it's just an opportunity to relook at that. Mm -hmm. The third thing that you want to do is to set a goal. And this one actually says set a goal to reward yourself. And I don't know I mean, I read it, but I, I'd like to re, I'd like to rephrase it. I just like to set a goal and reward yourself for hitting it. <laughs> <laughs> so you should know why you're doing a no spend challenge, and it shouldn't just be for the sake of saving money. So that's going to be your deeper why, your deeper yes, and it makes saying no to other things more palatable. So if I have a deeper yes then I can say no to instant gratification more easily. That's not a fail-safe. There will be times when the instant gratification mentality creeps up and wins. But Mm -hmm. the goal is not to be perfect. The goal is to just set up the boundaries that make mindless and impulse spending a little more difficult so that you can think about them consciously and intention intentionally. And so the goal is really important to doing that. And it shouldn't just be the goal to pay off debt because that's a bigger one, but it doesn't translate to the same instant gratification that you 
that that's going to try and win out in the moment. So it should be a goal that's attainable at the end of your challenge. So whether that's I want to put 500 extra dollars towards my debt, I want to save enough to, you know, put the down payment on a, you know, a vacation or whatever, that goal should be meetable by the end of the challenge. And then mm. that can be the reward, but you can also do like a, an extra small reward for yourself as well. Like a, I would always like reward myself with a latte too. Uh, so th- I think that's super important in planning. Mm-hmm. I think that the step that came before that would be helpful too in defining what the goal is. Mm-hmm. As you ask yourself some of these questions that are listed out in the article of have my spending habits gotten out of line? Are there areas within my essentials that could even be tidied up? Am I spending money automatically on things that I don't use? The goal might even be to rein in certain types of spending, to make your spending more aligned with your values. It, it could be any number of things that your goal is, but it Again, moving through those steps is super helpful. And I love what you're highlighting there, Jen, of we're going to do better sticking to it if we do have a clear goal in mind and that time-limited goal in mind to know that it is something that can be done within a month, not just, Mm -hmm. I want to save $10,000. Well, if your earnings don't reflect that, then you won't be able to do that in one month. (laughs) For sure. And then finally, they wrap up the article with highlighting the pros and cons. And I think this is worth looking at, especially as we talk about sticking to this no spend challenge to know what we're getting ourselves into. What can I expect of this? What are some of the good things about it? And what are some of the things that I need to be aware might not be super beneficial? So of course, the pros with it is that it's a short time commitment. One month is not an eternity. So that can make a no spend month really attainable. It can provide a good deal of clarity on our spending habits, on the things that we value, on just habits in general. There's, It's amazing to hear from people who do a no spend challenge for any amount of time what they realize about themselves. So clarity on a lot of levels, I think, is worth expecting that that's going to happen. It can also highlight our priorities. It can help with some longer term savings goals. And then on the flip side, some of the cons can be, as you've already mentioned, Jen, the diet effect, right? Diets in general aren't always super beneficial because we feel like we've really deprived ourselves. And then when we go off of the diet, we kind of binge again. So it's going to be really important that we have this in mind and set up some barriers to us not just binging once the no spend month is over. Uh, Another thing that they point out is that it's only one month. So while that's a pro in its short time commitment, it could be a con in the fact that you can't accomplish the world in one month. But I still think it's worth it because then you can decide, do I want to do longer no spend challenges? Or what do I want to implement from here? So that's that's refutable for sure. (laughs) And then finally, the fact that small spendings are not always the lead culprit to our financial difficulties. That's, you know, that latte factor. It's not just cutting out buying coffee that's going to help make us our millions. And that is true. I would argue with that, that a no spend challenge can highlight some of the bigger financial problems that we may have. It can clear some of the clutter to identify what some of the deeper problems are, what the roots are, so that we can tackle it. So it's, again, yeah, our vote is definitely do this. doesn't have to be in January, but at some point throughout the year, we believe there's so much benefit to this. But keep these things in mind. It'll help you to stick with it. Yeah. The bottom line here is don't feel bad if a no-spend month doesn't work for you. Not everyone can go without spending money even for a month. But I think everyone should at least give it a try. And there is there is even a hybrid model. If you can't go a full 30 days without spending on discretionary expenses, uh, you can try to do a hybrid where you plan to do 15 or 16 days out of 30 uh, where you don't spend any money. And so that's honestly a little harder 
Um, it's not my first choice if you are trying to learn about your spending, but it is something that can kind of you know wet your whistle and get you introduced to them so that you feel more confident about doing a full no spend month. Uh, I think the last thing I want to say in this article is that I love that they pointed out small dollar spending is often not the most significant part of your problem. In frugality, many times we tend to stay focused on that. And you know us, if you listen to us for any period of time, that that we don't practice that kind of frugality. We practice high impact frugality. And we focus on big, big items. Um, But we think these smaller items can tell us a lot about ourselves and they can build self-discipline that permeates into other parts, into the big impact parts. So it's still, it's still, you should remember it um, and focus on it for a time, but not get stuck here. Uh, This is definitely the easiest place to start and that's why we talk about it a lot, Um, but we don't want to get stuck in the low-hanging fruit part. We want to like move Mm -hmm. on to, you know, bigger things like Mm -hmm. refinancing a mortgage and buying used over new uh, products and stuff. So stuff like that is where we really want to progress to. Climb the tree and get the high hanging fruit. Absolutely. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic, oracle.com slash strategic. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. So our (laughs) next article is from the Savvy Sparrow, and it's how to do a no-spend challenge plus 10 tips to stick with it. And so it's a pretty long article, and we are just going to look at these 10 tips to stick with it. What did you think about them, Jill? Well, I think they give us a bonus because there's actually 11 tips. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Which is great. It, uh, it's a great article. I'm, I'm glad that we're going to be able to spend the majority of our time on this one because it's worth reading through the whole thing. They talk about the different reasons for doing a no spend challenge based on what your various financial goals might be and how a no spend challenge can support that. So it's all great. Then you get to about the middle and there's just some really good tips for sticking to it. So we're going to go through all 11, the bonus one too, Mm -hmm. uh, and give our feedback. So I... I let's get into it. The first one is one of our personal favorites. Give yourself grace. 
We love to talk this message of freedom and permission and kindness towards ourselves. So please know as you enter this, especially if you're doing it for the first time, being kind to yourself, gracious with yourself, knowing and expecting that you may have an off day, that you may break one of your own rules that you've set up for yourself, Mm -hmm. expect it, plan for it. And by doing so, you will have better success in sticking to it and not completely falling off the wagon. So throughout the whole process, just keep this in mind of being kind to yourself. Yes, absolutely. I'm glad that is tip number one. Tip number two is if you do mess up one day, as you can expect that you will, especially if you've never done one before, don't use it as an excuse to binge spend. And don't say, oh, I messed up, so I'm just going to go off of it and I'll try again next month. I love starting a challenge on the first, but I also hate it. I think because people think they can only start something on the first, which is absolutely not true. I would love to normalize starting things on the third or the sixth or the 17th stuff like that. So if you, I think we love the uh, James Clear recommendation in his book, Atomic Habits, that you try and go every day, don't break the streak. But if you do break the streak, don't break it twice. So if you mess up one day, get back on it the next. Because even if you miss every other day, you've still done what, 15, 16 no-spend days, and that's amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is so easy to do, too. Like, you spend one thing, it's like, well, I already broke it, so oops, 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 oops. I'm pulling into the the parking lot of my favorite store. Oh, oops. (laughs) No, no, that's okay. No, no, no. You bought one thing, but just go home. Yeah. Go home and stop spending money. Don't open your computer. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Tip number three. Focus on the end goal. This is so important. This will have to be front of mind throughout the entire month. Rather than focusing on what it is that you're giving up, again, whatever that is, whether it's that coffee shop or going out to lunch or getting drinks with friends, whatever it is, don't focus on what you're giving up, but what you're gaining. So whatever your why was that we talked about in that first article at the top of the episode, what is the goal of this challenge? Keep reminding yourself of that. So whether it's saving money for an upcoming vacation or being able to pay cash, they give an example of paying cash for your kids' braces. I don't know if that's you and this is going to be able to jumpstart that savings. Focus on your child's straight teeth as the reason why you can't get drinks with your girlfriends and let that be the motivator. Yes. You want your child to get a really great job so they can support you one day. So skip those drinks. (laughs) Yeah. So that you can have all the things you ever wanted when your child does inevitably just financially pay for everything for you. That's the goal, I guess. Oh, we joke. Yes. Uh, Tip four is to save your unused gift cards for a rainy no spend day. We used to do this all the time. We would use our gift cards during the no spend challenge because sometimes we would just keep them around and save them for like a special occasion or something, but the special occasion never comes. Mm -hmm. So we always designated the no spend challenge as the special occasion. And so we would use our gift cards there. So I think this is a great, great tip. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this one. And I love that they highlight for a rainy no spend day, like the day that you're finding particularly difficult. Mm -hmm. and You just want to get out of the house and you want to do something that feels like a treat, but you don't want to spend money. Grab that gift card. Use that to satisfy whatever the urge is that you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. All right. Number five. I love this one too. Take advantage of freebies. This is such a good reminder that a no spend challenge is not congruent with a no fun challenge, which it, it, hate it was that challenge. I hate that. Never challenge. Never do n- that challenge. No, that's not even a challenge to be had. Mm-mm. It's funny. I almost laughed out loud when I read this because I, I almost think that like, all right, just buckle down for a month and just 
remove it all and see what you can do and accomplish. And it's partly that, but it's also like, oh, be creative. See how many things you can do without spending money. Like there is a flip side to this. So I love that they're highlighting this. They have a whole link of freebies. They mention how Krispy Kreme or various coffee shops or ice cream shops will do, will give away free ice cream, free donuts, free whatever on certain days of the year. So check that out. Also check out events on Facebook that are local to your area, free events. That's a great place to find things to do that you don't have to spend money on. Still get together with with friends, all of these things are still possible to have fun while you're not spending. And you can feel even more accomplished by the end of this month when you can say, look at how much I saved and I had fun. Absolutely. We are all about fun and it keeps your mind off of spending money. So it's not just a good idea, it's a necessity. Tip six, when you have to leave the house, bring water bottles and snacks. This is just a great tip in general. Always Always. have a few snacks. A mom knows this. Uh, (laughs) Have a few snacks and some water. And then she does say, especially if you have kids, then you won't feel the need to stop and buy uh, coffee or something. Get yourself a really nice travel mug for your coffee. Solve the problem of takeout coffee and just get yourself a nice travel mug and before take your it no out spend with you. challenge. <laughs> yeah. It solves a lot of problems. And so also if you know that you'll be uh, out running errands for a long time, maybe during a meal time, then you may want to pack a small lunchbox or cooler with enough food to hold you over until you get home. So that's a the great way to avoid the eating out. Mm-hmm. Number seven, plan your meals at least 24 hours in advance. So this is one of those things that will absolutely stretch some muscles for some of us. Some of you are experts at meal planning, and this tip is going to be no problem for you. Others of us, this is going to be an important discipline to practice. And we're not saying that you've got to be a master and you've got to do the Sunday night clear glass container meal prep for the week, Instagram worthy situation. Just at least 24 hours in advance, have an idea of what lunch, dinner is going to look like. This is definitely going to help you stick to it and not have an impulse purchase of some sort of takeout or even going to a restaurant some night. This helps us to be able to defrost the meat that we need to defrost, be looking in our pantries, all of that. So love this tip. Again, doesn't have to be insane. Just look at 24 hours in advance. Mm-hmm. And that kind of ties into tip eight, which is use your no spend challenge time to actually eat the foods you already have. So sometimes we call this a pantry challenge. And while I don't practice it, some people will simultaneously do them with their no spend challenge. So it's essentially not spending money on groceries either and just eating everything out of your fridge, freezer, and pantry so that you can minimize the clutter in your kitchen. And it's a really great idea. If you're somebody who stocks up on sales and sometimes has to throw food away because it's past its expiration date, if you have a packed fridge, this is a really good opportunity to get creative and use what you have, though it is not required. I would always spend money on fresh produce um, and stuff because I tend to have a more minimalist fridge. So I wouldn't be able to make it a month on the things in my kitchen. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. even if you don't think you do, you will be surprised by how much you can get through just listing everything out that you have in your kitchen, making a full inventory and thinking of meals that you can make with what you already have. I'm sure you can go at least a week without grocery shopping. I'm sure most people can. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And it's amazing how fun it can be to get creative with the stuff that you have. And there's so many resources on the internet to even plug in like, all right, I've got rice and a can of beans and this and that. And what can I do with it? And up comes a recipe. And then you get to try new things too. 
Mm-hmm. Tip number nine, get into the habit of tracking your income and expenses while you're doing your no spend challenge. So if this isn't something that you already do, you're going to want to consider a system for doing this while, during this no spend challenge, but then also something that you can carry with you beyond this challenge because you're not going to know how much you actually saved or how successful the snow spend challenge was for you if you don't have a way to actually see what was I able to save by the end of this time. And then again, it's a really helpful, necessary tool for moving forward. So track your spending as well as your earning. Know how you're going to do that ahead of time before you even start. This is going to be a really helpful thing for sticking to it at, because it can be such a motivator to know and track, oh, look at now because I didn't spend on this, I'm able to put even more away towards that goal that I have set for what this my, my savings to be this month. Mm-hmm. So tip number 10, don't start a no-spend challenge right before a big holiday or major event. So we are not saying you should do a no-spend challenge for December or November. Like you could definitely do one in between for a week or something. It's up to you. But we're not suggesting that you put yourself through the mental turmoil that it would be to not spend money right now. Um, Mm -hmm. But I love the idea of doing uh, no spend October or maybe into November so that you can be cognizant of what you're spending money on and that will cause you to spend less overall during the holidays. And so it's not just the um, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, holidays, um, but any time that you have, like an anniversary or kid's birthday, graduation, stuff like that. So plan when major events are happening, when you're going to want to spend money and just plan your challenge around that. Maybe you do, you know, maybe you have Valentine's Day in, in February and you spend money on that because you've been married for less than six seconds. <laughs> but maybe you do want to spend money on that. And you you decide to do a no spend challenge in February because it is the best month to do a no spend challenge. 28 days, yeah. y'all. Yeah. Uh, it is the best. So maybe you skip the 14th or the 15th or whenever you want to go out to dinner and you just do 27 days. Who Who's going to know? How are they going to know? It doesn't matter. Who's going to know? <laughs> Yeah. So you don't have to like skip. If February is the best month for you to do a no spend challenge, you don't have to skip it just because you want to go out for Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Just make exceptions. You get to make the rules. Yeah. Mm. Yes. We make the rules. Yes. Finally, tip number 11, which no one was expecting based on the title of this article. But I like (laughs) it. I like it for the challenge and I like it for life. Make a grocery list before going to the grocery store. That's just and life then, advice right here. And then stick to it. Mm. Uh-huh. You added that. Jill well, added yeah. that. Yeah. Well, she's smart. It, the tip is to help you to stick to it and then do this and then stick to it. That's yeah. the tip. I did add that. <laughs> the t- Jill's tip is to do do it. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Eric and I, I think I said this on a recent episode too, that I felt on top of things and a no spend challenge can help you with that of planning ahead. So much of this is connected to future thinking, planning ahead, being proactive. It's how we can have results when we're not impulsively spending, when we are more intentional. And so this just helps us to exercise those muscles in some very real ways. So don't just find yourself at the grocery store racking your brain on, do I need more cheese? What am I going to make this week? Think about that when you're in the comfort of your own home or even your car, if your car is comfortable and think through. But if you're at home, that's convenient because then you can actually check your pantry and know if and your fridge and know if you need cheese or not. And then think through, what do I have already? What, how can I use that? What else do I need to get to make this into a meal? Write it all into a list and then challenge yourself during this no spend month to not get anything outside of what's on that list. Really discipline yourself to not break away from what you've decided. And then look at the savings of not shopping impulsively, of having a plan. It really could be a motivator for more long-term proactive planning. 
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I love all of these tips to consider while you're doing and before you start doing your no spend challenge. I think yeah, they're good. And cuz really frugal living is just having the mindset of planning ahead. Yes. And if you are able to plan ahead and plan in advance, then you are able to live frugally. Cuz when we wait till the last minute or we wait till emergencies and we we act reactively instead of proactively, that's when things cost more money. That's why people say, "Oh, like if you're living in poverty, you can't live frugally because you're only thinking like hand to mouth. And that is a thing. But if you are not living that way and you are able to plan for something, you should take advantage of that um, because you can save so much money by using that to your advantage. So it, this helps train your brain to think that way. Mm. You know what else trains your brain to think in some really amazing ways? Yeah, to think about the Frugal Friends podcast every week for sure. The, the bill, bill of, of the, the week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Hey, Jen and Jill. My name is Sarah and I'm so excited to be leaving my first ever Bill of the Week. I am a newer listener, but I have a really long commute. So I've been able to download and listen to a lot of episodes and it's really great keeping me motivated, getting me on track to being debt free. I knew for a while exactly what my bill of the week would be, and I'm so excited because it finally happened today. It is a bill of sale. Earlier this year, I bought a truck to pull around my travel trailer, and I've had my smaller car just sitting around, and I finally decided that um, I was going to sell it. And with that money, I knew the two bills that I was going to pay off. I was going to pay off my care credit card which has a ridiculous 24% APR. And I paid off $1,700 of that. And I was able to pay off two of our phones. So that will reduce my monthly phone bill by about $60. Um, the savings on the credit card is just absolutely insane. Then I was able to call the insurance and I got a refund for the money I've already paid for my insurance. And while I was there, I noticed I had a driver on my insurance that I didn't need. And I took that off and I got an extra $40 refunded. So it's just a great day and I'm making waves. Awesome, Sarah. It's making me want to sing, Sarah. (laughs) I love the (laughs) bill of sale. And everything that that bill of sale allowed you to do. So many things. Not only did you pay off credit cards and phones, but just the sale of this vehicle then caused you to look at something you probably wouldn't have otherwise looked at. But well Mm -hmm. done for digging deeper. This is so amazing. You really did hit it out of the ballpark and crushed a lot of things all at once. Congrats, Sarah. If you guys have a bill that hits it out of the ballpark, then please visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill to leave us yours. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles, and Toyota has them with more on the way. But we also know a BEV is not for everyone, whether it's because of cost, range, or concern about finding a charging station when your battery gets low. Ah! You start freaking out. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon-neutral future in vehicles and in manufacturing plants, too. In the years ahead, the materials used to make just one long-range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug-in hybrids or 90 gas-electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified. 
empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or a battery EV. So shop, learn more, and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family, and for yourself with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late. Never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. And now it's time for the lightning round. So today, Jill and I are going to share our plans for No Spend January because we are doing a No Spend Challenge in Club BFF in January. And Jill and I participate in these challenges, Uh, maybe not as intensely as our members, but we do participate in them as well. So um, I have been thinking about this Mm, for a while. Hot seat of vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I I honestly just want to do 16 no spend days. I've done enough no spend challenges in my life to not really desire to do any more. And I think you have to know you're at a place where enough is enough and like you're okay. Mm-hmm. You're happy with your yeah. spending. Um, and when you're happy and you there. You learned what you needed to. Right. And, and then you don't need to like torture yourself anymore. So I'm not the person that's going to be doing a no spend year ever. But – I do. I would like to challenge myself to do 16 no spend days in January. I would love to kind of reset my spending uh, so that I can reprioritize and, and do some things that haven't been available or, or may have gotten out of the habit of over 2020, 2021, just, you know, because of the weirdness. So uh, I'd love to reset and uh, and kind of meditate on that while not spending money. Amazing, Jen. I mean, you are the queen of no spend challenges in your understanding of them. And I I do think that this is something, unless you really do love them, once you've done a couple, you can kind of learn from them and implement that you don't have to do something so extreme. You just kind of implement as you go. Yeah. What you've already learned. Yeah, I agree with that. How about you, Jill? Well, because I anticipate that I will receive between Santa and my husband everything I could possibly want on my wish list in December, it will be very easy for me (laughs) to not spend hardly anything in January. Wow. That's my little plug for Santa's, yeah, Santa's getting you some (laughs) some good stuff then. (laughs) Wow. I don't want much, but you know, I'm I'm really hoping, crossing these fingers that uh someone's paying attention and that I find myself on the nice list. Yeah, maybe a few Vitamix accessories. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I'm good with the Vitamix. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, spending in general, you've heard me describe this. It's not a super difficult it, like area for me. I don't typically spend much, but I I do want to be even more cognizant of only spending on renovations in January. That it is something that I want to spend on. Like I'm not going to try and say, let's cut this out because we are trying to make progress on our dumpster fire kitchen. But I'd love to see us really hone in on just this area of spending, excluding pretty much everything else, like keeping ourselves from other types of luxuries, reining in food, which is a big area of spending for us so that we can put 
as much money as possible towards getting this house done. I support that decision. I also want to see you spend on nothing else but your dumpster fire kitchen. (laughs) Thank you. I might find myself traveling a bit in January, so we're going to have to be proactive Mm -mm. about that. No, put it on hold. Do the kitchen. (laughs) That's what I need. I need you to focus on this, Jill. I need you to finish your kitchen. (laughs) Think about my needs. Yikes. (laughs) Well, with a few days left in September, hopefully you have enough time to execute on the tips in this and also listen to some of those episodes we mentioned at the beginning, at the top of the show, and really make the most of No Spend October or No Spend Any Month. Whenever you're listening to this, when we originally recorded this, we were planning for our No Spend Januaries and... I did well in, in that month. And then that, that month co- kind of continued on for the rest of the portion of the year we're already living. But yeah, I mean, this can be implemented really whenever it's going to make the most sense for you. Yeah. I can't remember if I did those 16 no spend days. <laughs> it was a while ago. But January is like the other biggest month for no spend challenges. But you do not have to wait for a month where you can do all no spend days, you can do a set number of days in any month and just say, I want to have 16 no spend days this month. Do them, either get them all out for 16 days or vary them. There's always an option for being more cognizant and more intentional about your spending. And that's the goal. So we also actually have a few no spend challenge, like workbooks and things that we've made over the years. If you go to our Shopify, I think it's shop.frugalfriendspodcast.com. We actually, I think, have a free seven-day no-spend challenge workbook. But we also have a 30-day no-spend challenge workbook that uh, you can pay for. And this is a review from that workbook from Brenda. She says, I love this workbook. It's laid out in an easy to follow format. The questions really make me think about why I want to do the challenge. I've tried to do no spend challenges before and having the workbook is making a huge difference for me. Between that and having accountability partners also doing the challenge, I know that this time will be much more successful. So awesome, Brenda. So glad you like it. That's so great. Thanks, Brenda, for that review of the workbook. And thanks all of you for listening. If you just want freebies, savings tips, values-based spending hacks in your inbox every week, if that's kind of the more that you want from us, head to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash friend letter to get all of those goodies. They're all for free in your inbox. It's fun. There's gifts like the GI. Fs, that kind of gifts, but sometimes other types of gifts. And sometimes GIFTs. Yeah, yeah. we like we like all of it. So <laughs> if you're ready to get that friend letter and those goodies, again, frugalfriendspodcast.com slash friend letter. See you next time. Frugal Friends is produced by Eric Siriani. Did you really do a no spend January? Because I remember in January. So this was January 2022, though, that this episode came out. And in January 2023, you did not have a no spend January. In 2023? Yeah. Wait, why? What in happened? the year of our what Lord, 2023. What are you remembering? That I'm because not... I remember you bought a case of wine. You were like, oh, I'm not going to spend money this month. Did I do that or did my mother-in-law do that? no. You did it, Jill. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I, <laughs> you're right. I, okay, this isn't the note. Yeah. At that time, 2022, yes, where I said I'm not spending on anything other than renovations, 100%. That's true. And then this past January, I thought I was going to do a good thing all over, preparing for some <laughs> of the changes that Eric and I were making in our finances where we were seeing just a decrease overall 
of financial resource. And yet, knowing knowing this and telling myself we really have to tighten the belt loops or whatever the heck they say, I went on a rampage. Apparently, <laughs> telling myself that I can't just doesn't work. I did a wine shipment. Uh-huh. I ordered from one of those meal kit delivery services. To me, it was prep for the end of the world and stock up now because you're never going to have fun again in your life. It was like my attempt at being ready to not spend. And in my attempt to be ready to not spend, I spent a lot, which if you just listened to this episode, mm-hmm. then you know that that's not exactly the whole goal. Um, that's like binging. Um, but mm-hmm. it is what I did. It is what happened. Uh-huh. Yeah. But you know what? I drank the wine. I ate the food because you know what I hate more than wasting money is wasting food. So. Amen. It all got and used. Yeah, you did. You did use it all. And over the course of several months, it saved you money. But it did not work out <laughs> for a no spend month. No. <laughs> this is this is what we talk about in long term value. Yeah. Instead of short-term See? savings. See, look, I know. But when you're doing a no-spend challenge, you are looking at the short term, but just for a short amount of time, which is why we don't talk about like year-long no-spend challenges. Those are not something we get behind. Yeah, no. But no. to each their own. Because if you do a, a year-long no-spend challenge, surely you can get a book deal. <laughs> there are 100% of the people I know that have done no spend challenges of a year or more have gotten book deals. So if that is something you're interested in. Wow. That's a little tip. A little <laughs> post-show tip. Here for it. Do a foot of book deal. <laughs> with the best all-inclusive vacation deals to Mexico and the Caribbean, booking your getaway with cheap Caribbean vacations means you have more freedom to do your deal. Whether you want to enjoy snorkeling, endless margaritas and more, or simply soak up the sun and sand in a tropical paradise, Cheap Caribbean Vacations has your deal for that. Plan and book the exact getaway you want at exactly the right price for you by using our exclusive budget Beach Finder. Or find a featured all-inclusive package and do your deal at CheapCaribbean.com. Bring home Napoleon. Destiny has brought me here. The action epic from acclaimed director Ridley Scott. What is your name? Napoleon. You are the greatest leader in the history of the world. Witness the rise. You are nothing without me. Of the legend. Starring Academy Award winner Joaquin Phoenix and Vanessa Kirby. I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. I simply never do. Napoleon. Buy or rent on digital now. Rated R.